You're listening to The Diarist, a Red Couch Black Dog production. Episode 7, The Ways of Passion. Part 1. I felt bruised and battered. Of course, there was no evidence of what we'd done. How could it be worse? Truth is, it couldn't. It's farce. Going to try on and select my wedding gown. My closest friends, mother, and Mrs. Morris fawning on me. An eager audience to what was supposed to be the happiest time of my life. Here the night before, I'd done things no bride or wife would do. Oh, it was back and forth. How was I supposed to know what a married woman would do? I was a hypocrite. A liar. I'd betrayed all of them. How far would I take it? Richard was married. Perhaps I would marry too, become Mrs. Stephen Morris. Would I continue to carry on with Richard? It seemed plausible. After the night before, there was no telling what I might be inclined to do. I considered going through with the wedding, but I knew I didn't want any other man to touch me. And yet, Mother was prouder than I'd ever seen her. She looked at me with quick, joyful glances as she navigated the roads. Her hands on the wheel, cat-eye sunglasses, pillbox hat. This was her dream as much as it was mine. Father was over the moon, too. How was Mother so lovely and beautiful? How had she so perfectly fit the mold? Leave it alone, Andrea. I can hardly concentrate on the road. Either leave it on one station or turn it off. Sorry. I suppose I'm just nervous. Well, let me look at you. Your eyes are puffy and you look pale. You look terrible. Are you feeling all right? You knew we were doing pictures of the luncheon today. What's the matter with you? I said I was nervous. Well, I suppose I understand. It's a big day. Andrea, do I smell tobacco on you and alcohol? Of course not. Well, what time did you and Stephen get back from the symphony last night? We didn't... You didn't get back. Oh, Andrea, don't tell me you've gone and spoiled yourself. Why would you... How could you say such a thing? Well, then, you didn't what? We didn't go, if you must know. Well, what did the two of you do? I'm surprised Stephen would do such a thing. He knew how expensive those tickets were, and the Dior dress that cost me a fine penny. Well, no one told you to buy me a $100 dress. I saw it as an investment, with a big dividend. So where did the two of you go? Nowhere. I had to work. What? I had to work on a campaign. It wasn't ready, so I had to work late. Is that so? What time did you get back? Maybe nine o'clock. Well, I know that's a lie. How do you know? I was calling you until eleven. No answer. I was in the shower. Then I fell asleep. I I didn't hear the phone. What have you been up to? That you would tell such a blatant lie? Is this how I'm supposed to remember my bridal shower with my mother? Accusations and insults? I just gave you an answer that would satisfy you, so why don't you let me be and we can continue on with the charade? How dare you? What are you accusing me of? God, you sound guilty of something I don't want to imagine. That's a fine way to treat your daughter. (sighs) We're here at the bridal shop. 
I want you to put on a smile even if you feel terrible. We'll talk about the drinking later today when you aren't apt to ruin my reputation. Here, have a piece of Wrigley's. I hope it will disguise the smell. As soon as they pass out champagne, have one so it will cover up the smell of gin or whatever it is that you had with that man last night. Mother, I'm sorry. Don't let this ruin our day. I haven't done anything you'd be ashamed of. Oh, uh, there's Agatha. Uh, uh, Agatha? Agatha, dear, I've got a little bride to be. Are the girls here? Oh, we'll be there presently. Here, let me put a little powder under your eyes. Look here, uh, pinch your cheeks. Mother, I smell your rose perfume. Remember when I was a child? Remember you would read to me? More than anything, I remember the scent of your perfume. You were so kind to me when I was a child. Don't you know how much I looked up to you? Uh, that's nice of you to say, darling. You know I want what's best for you, don't you? Of course. I know I'm strict with you. The responsibility of raising a moral girl has rested squarely on my shoulders. I haven't minded one bit. You're smart, beautiful, and very wise person. You have been since you were a small child. I'd like to take some credit for that. Oh, I'm afraid this is my last duty as a mother. Oh, it's not. You'll help me set up my house and the children and the grandchildren. Oh, oh yes, yes. I suppose I'll see much more of you once you're married. Oh, look at me, getting emotional. Now I'll ruin the photographs. Darling, what is it? Sweetheart, you look as if you've seen a ghost. Honestly, you really do. <laughs> oh, now, now, Andrea, you'll ruin your makeup. You look so pretty. There will be photographers and at the fitting and, and the luncheon afterwards. You've got a long day ahead of you. You don't want to look unhappy in your wedding album. It was an absolute flurry of activity. All the girls surrounded me and touched my hair, zipped dresses, handed over veils. It took some time. Mother examining each dress, seated on a red velvet chair beside Mrs. Morris, the two conferring and then shaking their heads. No, no, that's garish, or it doesn't suit your figure. Back in my day. Then finally, when I stepped out on the round platform, in a white Christian Dior tulle gown with a floral applique and bead and sequin vine. When I stood before them, a hush came over the room. The look in everyone's eyes reflecting back at me was utter adoration. I had a realization. This was what girls waited for. Entry into this exclusive club. And I was invited. I realized I could, in fact, pretend. I would simply leave Roth, Hayes, and Johnson. I would leave Richard. I could love Stephen. In fact, I already did. I had been manipulated by Richard, that's all. Standing there, a princess, about to enter an enchanted kingdom, I decided I wouldn't wait to leave the firm. Richard was married. He should have known better than to get his 25-year-old secretary drunk and then take advantage of her. You see, I was intoxicated by the attention. As much as I desired Richard, the rational side of me had yearnings just as strong. I'd acted foolish, but I was no fool. Yes, Richard was the center of the universe at the firm. Everyone and everything orbited around the three partners, and their gravitational pull on the office girls was all part of that universe. But I had another universe, at which I would be the center, as Stephen's wife and his children's mother. And I, too, would have my magnetic energy. I could see it standing there in my gown. All the housewives and country club ladies. A toast! A toast! to my beautiful daughter. Look at us all here, 
ladies of at least two generations. <laughs> oh, we are here to celebrate Andrea's engagement. She will be a lovely bride and a wonderful mother. And Agatha, we are blessed to be joining your family. These past few months feel as though I've been given the sister I've always wanted. Cheers! Cheers! I feel as though I've been blessed too. We are going to be closer than sisters. And my darling Andrea, I am so pleased that you said yes to Stephen. I can't tell you how he spoke of you. In fact, that's all he's spoken of for quite some time now. <laughs> he's hopelessly, madly in love with you, darling. Cheers to the girl who inherited my job at Roth, Hayes, and Johnson, and who became a dear friend in the process. I was first to run off and leave my position for family life, but you will soon follow. <laughs> now look at me. I'm big and round, expecting my first. Oh, we will have so much fun together as new mothers, sharing recipes and such. Oh. <laughs> to my dear friend Andrea, you are so lovely and beautiful. When I saw you in your dress today, I started to cry. You are going to be such a beautiful bride. To think I was the one who helped the two of you start dating. Oh, is that true? Yes, Mother. Ellen played Cupid at the office. Oh, I had no idea, darling. I owe you the world. <laughs> <laughs> I knew they would be right for each other. To think I'll have a little more time with you. What do you mean, Ellen? Andrea has decided to stay on at Roth, Hayes, and Johnson for the time being. Oh, darling, I... I know it's a terrible time. I'm turning in my resignation. I won't be back. Oh, I shouldn't have brought it up here. No. Stephen just insisted on Friday night that I resign. It seems he wants me all to himself. And wants to start a family as soon as possible. How romantic! Oh, that's wonderful news, Andrea. I will immediately sign you up for Junior League. You can have the best of both worlds. That's a good idea. All right, girls, enough business talk. We've worked up quite an appetite with all our hard work today. Order whatever you like. The Shrimp Louie is just marvelous. Once I practiced it enough, I asked Ellen to give it to Richard first thing in the morning. I hand-wrote a copy for myself to keep, just to remember my conviction. The truth. The absolute truth, independent of his manipulation and seduction. I was no more in love with Richard Hayes than Mickey Rooney. Sure, a girl has crushes. That's natural. Maybe I'd made a foolish mistake. I'll admit that. Maybe it was a big mistake, yes but one that no one had to know anything about. Why should I give up my life and happiness? Stephen was everything. Richard was simply a domineering and handsome executive. If he showed that kind of attention to any girl, they would have... Well, I don't know what other girls would do. But I agree with Mother. Spare the truth when it will do more harm than good. Dear Mr. Hayes, I regretfully resign from my position as secretary at Roth, Hayes, and Johnson. My circumstances have changed, as I'm sure you are aware. I am engaged to be married to Stephen Morris, also of Roth, Hayes, and Johnson. My priorities and responsibility are to my future husband. I am needed to manage our home affairs and prepare for the wedding. There is so much to do. My resignation is effective immediately. I have arranged for Ellen Thomas to deliver my final paycheck to Miss Andrea Davies, 59 West 46th Street, Apartment 452, New York, New York. Sincerely, Miss Andrea Davies. I didn't waste a minute. I took a taxi over to Ellen's apartment. I handed her the letter, kissed her on the cheek, and told her to call me sometime the following week. How do I describe my freedom? 
Dear reader, haven't you figured out by now? Richard Hayes had a spell on me. Somehow I reversed the spell. So instead of going straight back to my apartment that Sunday, I walked through the park, stopped for coffee, I fed the ducks. I even called mother, told her I missed her and took the train home to Connecticut. That night she made my favorite casserole. We had cinnamon cake for dessert with a dollop of ice cream. You see, I could have been completely happy. I thought for those 24 hours that I would be. I had found a way out and into a life I was very much looking forward to. Instead of a shameful return to the memories of my torrid night with Richard, I felt an indignant righteousness. You see, I fully convinced myself that I'd been seduced and taken advantage of. I allowed a little sympathy to seep through. He was a lonely man, tortured by damnation to a woman who made his life hell. His life was the mirror opposite of what mine was soon to become. Indeed, when I thought of Richard, I saw darkness of the suspense movies I'd seen. And when I considered my own, it was a beautiful palette of ivory, pale yellow in abundant sunshine. All right, I'm exaggerating a bit. I'm overcompensating. Of course, I knew deep down I had not been taken advantage of. But what constitutes being taken advantage of? I knew the carnal desire was something aberrant in me. Some nearly self-destructive desire. Something most women didn't feel. But as I write and rewrite this account, I am trying to hold myself accountable to the truth as it was. At that particular moment, I was still Snow White. I hadn't been stalked by the jealous, evil underbelly of fate. I didn't know what was lurking. I thought I was clever enough to convince myself that there was a plausible escape route. Then I could just run away from him. Hello, this is Andrea. I'm not accepting your resignation. Richard, I'm... You have no right to resign. Of course I do. Why? We've finally been honest with each other. This can't go anywhere. I'm sorry for that. But would you believe me if I told... Wait. I don't want to have this conversation at the office. Please. Let's just say goodbye here. Richard, please. You're asking me for something I can't... I'm coming over. Well, I'm not giving you my address. Don't be childish. Besides, I have it right here in front of me in your resignation letter. Richard, please. Hello? Mother, uh, it's Andrea. Is is Father available? Why, no. He went fishing with Terence McGinnis. All right, I'll call later. Is everything all right, darling? What do you want to talk to your father about? Nothing. I, I, I wanted to ask him about... I wanted his opinion on a gift for Stephen. Oh, darling, I would know much better than your father about that. I have to go. Darling? What should I do? What? I could leave. It will take him 15 minutes to get here. Well, I'm not fixing myself up. Well, I will fix myself up. If I look beautiful and strong, I'll be able to say no. If I'm in my bathrobe and weak... No, I don't want to look nice for him. Why don't I have anyone to talk with? A girl with only her father to tell the secrets of her love life to. I feel... Who is it? You know who it is. Please go away. Andrea, don't be foolish. Open the door. Please go away, Richard. Do as I ask you. Open the door. Stop being so childish. Come in. It's small. Nothing like your apartment, of course. You can have a seat. I don't want to take a seat. I can't talk long. I'm sorry I'm still in my robe. I I know it's past nine, but I planned on... Andrea... I'm sleeping in since I resigned. Andrea. Yes? Come over here. Please, Richard. 
You don't know what it's like for a girl. I have no choices, and I do love Stephen. He's not married, and my mother loves Come him. Come here. Here. What is it? Oh, my resignation letter. I'm not accepting it, unless I know. Know what? Andrea, did I force you the other night? Tell me honestly. I won't be angry with you. Did I make you do something you didn't want to do? No. You wanted me to touch you like that and say those things to you. You can't just nod. We aren't children here. You have to tell me so I'll know for certain. I wanted you to. You wanted what? I wanted to be with you. Are you in love with me? Yes. Come closer. I'm in love with you too. The game is over. We know now. It's complicated. What is? All of it. When I'm with you, it doesn't feel complicated. No, I, I don't either. But then... I want you to be my wife. I think of you as my wife. But you're married. We both know that isn't a marriage. No, but you can't marry me. There are ways. It will just take time. Now it's up to you. What is? Should I put this letter in my pocket and leave? And not come back? Never see each other again. Should I? I don't... I don't want to answer. Remember, we're not children. You have to tell me what you're feeling. You're not a little girl. Should I put the letter in my pocket, Andrea? Should I walk out the door? No. Come closer, Andrea. What is it? Now I'm going to make you my wife. What do you mean? Take off your clothes, Andrea. I'm shaking too much. I want you to make love to me. I have for so long. You have to do as I say. Take off your clothes, Andrea. Will you make love to me? I never have before. Yes. Will you always be rough when you make love to me? No. But this time I will. How will you? Give me the belt to your robe. Here. What are you going to do? See? I won't make it too tight. Just enough. Do you have a scarf? Of course. In the top drawer of my dresser. Sit here on the edge of the bed. Are you going to make love to me? Andrea, stop asking questions now. I'm nervous. Here in this drawer? The scarves? Yes, on the left side. This one's silk. It's nice. I want you to trust me completely. You see? Yes. Will you make love to me, Richard? Shh. But I haven't done this before. I, I don't I don't know Shh. what to say. I'm making you my wife. I love you with all my heart. Believe me, I love you. Come here, darling. Are you alright? Yes. I should have trusted my heart from the beginning. I've been in love with you. It was foolish for me to play this game with Stephen. It's alright. I wasn't going to let you go through with it. What do I do now? How do I fix things? Swiftly. These things require a surgeon's precision. You must tell Stephen in no uncertain terms. He'll be devastated. That's why it's swift. You have to be strong. Hide your feelings. Pretend you're cold. You're not, of course. You're kind. And mother? She's your mother. She loves you. You don't understand. 
she doesn't... Your mother doesn't love you? No. How will she react? She'll never forgive me. Oh, Andrea, I'm sorry, darling. But this is your life, not hers. I can't please her. She already suspects... Suspects what? She can tell how I feel about you. All right. Talk to Stephen. Take a few days off. People will see something's happened. I know Stephen. He'll keep his chin up. He'll accept it. I'm giving up so much. Don't get me wrong. I want you. I only want you, but... Are you having doubts again, Andrea? Is that what this is about? Again? No, I never had doubts. That's just it. When you called that night months ago, didn't you know I was in love with you? Why were you so rejecting and cruel to me? I don't like to be challenged, Andrea. You have a terrible habit of doing that. I know I do. Maybe it's passion. Maybe it makes me crazy. When you come to work on Thursday or Friday, we'll act the same as usual. You'll call me Mr. Hayes and for a time, until things blow over, you'll just work as my secretary. Maybe in a month's time we can work on campaigns again. With Stephen? Yes. Be strong. You're ambitious and you can't be emotional or sentimental. If I've taught you anything as my protege, I hope it's to have a cold heart when you need to. I, I don't know if I can work with Stephen. Trust me. This is happening so fast. I'm worried about Mother. If you're amenable, I'd like you to help with the household again. Mostly with Margot. I'd like her to get to know you. Of course. I'd be honored. Well, this little place will do for a while until we can figure out how to be together. What do you mean? Darling, this will be our home. The Manhattan apartment will be for appearances, but Margot and I will spend evenings here with you and just go home to sleep. During the day, you'll have to leave the office after lunch. We'll get another girl to cover. You'll pick up Margot at the nursery school and bring her here. Have you been planning this, Richard? Yes. You knew we'd be together? Didn't you? I wanted it. You're so beautiful. It's like a dream. Here, stay here. I want to select your outfit today. Your clothes are so elegant. But I'd like to buy you some things, things I like. Of course. For now, your lovely wardrobe will do fine. Here's the blouse I love, the one with the poppies. It's so bright and makes your eyes look even greener. And the skirt. I love you in black skirts and black stockings. Where are your slips? In the dresser. There in the top drawer. Oh, these are so conservative. They are? Yes, darling. I'll have to buy you some that suit you. Suit me? Yes, things I like. I'd like you to wear this today. Of course. Put your clothes on. Get dressed. Oh, Richard, I don't know why, but I want you to make love to me again. You have a lot to do today. So do I. I'd like you to dress now, Andrea. I feel faint. I feel faint. I, I don't know if I can. You can. There. You look so lovely. Bring the scarf here, won't you? Here it is. Well, bring it over here. I love scarves on you. Let me tie it for you. Kiss me, Richard. I'm completely in love with you. I'm going to call you in a few days. A few days? Yeah, I'd like you to settle things and take some time for yourself. But I don't want time to myself. I, w I want to be with you. <laughs> You're very impatient. 
I've waited so long. I want to be with you. You will, darling. You just have to get yourself out of the mess you've made. Remember, surgical. There's no point in entertaining emotions when you talk with Stephen. Believe me, it makes it easier for everyone. It seems so cold. You'll be glad for it, trust me. All right. I'll arrange to meet him tonight. We'll go to dinner. Very well. Whatever you have to do, Andrea. Why, you don't like that idea? I'm not crazy about that idea, no. Why? Because you're fickle. And I'm a very jealous man. Hey, this is Donna. I'm the creator of The Diarist. And I wanted to thank all the listeners so far who have given us iTunes reviews and also um, checked out our fan page and um, and downloaded our episode. We've gotten great feedback and mostly people have been telling us the show is binge-worthy, addictive, and um, they are just completely engrossed and dragged into the story. Episode 7 is a big turning point in the story, um, as you probably have guessed by the end of this episode. Um, Andrea has made some choices that are going to send her life into quite a... Um, Uh, quite an intense place and things get deeper and darker and weirder. When we were recording episode 10, it started to sound a lot like Hitchcock, which is where I was hoping it would go. Um, But we need your help to keep going and to keep producing such great audio. Um, We are so fortunate to have amazing actors on this um, show and As you know from listening to audio drama, actors make the show, and they're all um, donating their time for free. I've written the uh, show and co-produced it and co-directed it, and that all um, is free, and the sound engineering. So um, we're putting this whole thing together, and we love it. Um, We have more ideas for upcoming episodes. Um, We're looking ahead to season two and also a a little summer festival of, um, of kind of like audio theater Um, audio drama so if you can check out our patreon page um, and if you like our show go to itunes and review it that's how more people hear about it Um, and um, yeah but just keep listening and tell people about it we're really really excited and um, for this week there's a part two to episode seven Um, and i hope you enjoy it it gets um it starts to get really crazy. Um, and you can always check out our website, thediaristpodcast.com. And on Patreon, we are also The Diarist. And uh, our Facebook page, you can like us on Facebook or Twitter. Thank you very much. <laughs>